Hari Om to all the Divine Atma Jyotis. As part of our Vedanta Dhyana, we are contemplating on Bhajagovindam. So today we will contemplate on Shloka 4, 5 and 6. Deepaji, would you like to begin? Okay, sir. The water on the lotus leaf is very unsteady. Also, it's like extremely unstable. Like the water that will be on the lotus leaf, it may just drop at any moment. Such is our life, which is un unstable. We come across sorrows and uh, sometimes uh, uh, surprisingly we'll, uh, we will find ourselves to be in a uh, in a state of sadness. So such is our life. Know that the entire world is devoured by disease and conceit, smitten with sorrow. And this is not just we, but the entire world is suffering due to the diseases and um, conceit. Everyone is sorrowful. That's it. As long as you have the ability to earn money, so long will your dependents be attached to you. After that, when you live with an infirm body, no one world even. I think it's like no one would. No one would. No one would even speak to you a word. Yes. As long as we are able to earn money, until then our dependents will be attached to us. After that, when we uh, suppose if we are not earning and uh, we are uh, 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 suppose we have some health issues or something of such, then no one would even speak to us. Would it be so, sir? So, Shankaracharya ji is uh, bringing to light the general behavior pattern of the society. Again, it depends. Is it not? This is how the society generally behaves. So he's, uh, again, you know, his intention is to wake us up. Okay. As long as there is breath in the body, so long people in the household ask, ask about one's welfare. Once the breath leaves, on the destruction of the body, the dependents dread that very same body. As long as we are alive, everyone will speak to us or uh, ask about our welfare. But the moment a person dies, they destroy the body. So here, Bharya is even the wife. Yeah. And if suppose the body uh, uh, comes back to life again, then everyone will predict it to be a ghost, even uh, the wife. Mm. So they are afraid of it because that is something unusual and not expected. So, so what do you what do you feel Shankaracharya ji is doing through these uh, shlokas? You know, each one uh, um, demonstrates 
the ills in our uh, society, ills in uh, you know our own minds, right? So why is he why is he uh, doing this? What what is the inference you have? He's ask. He's telling us not to be. It's attached to anyone. Uh, because because this is the uh, truth. What he says is the truth in this, and he's trying to wake us up. Mm. Of the illusion that we are in. Won't that lead to a kind of a very dry relationship yeah it uh, uh, when we think of it that way then uh, it is uh, i mean it is true what he says is true but uh, but even gita teaches us not to expect the result uh, i mean uh, yeah not to be attached to the result so even Shankaracharya is indirectly telling us about it. Yeah, result of an action is uh, one thing. But here, what you said is you know, not to be attached to anyone. Yeah. Does it mean that uh, you know it can create very dry relationship? Then we are not expecting anything. We will not even expect anyone to be um, uh, anyone to be like uh, they were to us earlier. Though it may sound difficult, but. Uh, But uh, but it is good if we uh, are not attached to anyone. Okay, so. But it's not practical, sir. It's not practical. <laughs> <laughs> so, what Shankaracharya is suggesting is not practical. <laughs> okay. Let's listen to others and see what kind of perspectives come up. Okay. Haryom Satyaji. Haryom We usually begin uh, our contemplation with the Vedanta Dhyana and we pick up uh, different uh, uh, chants for Vedanta Dhyana. These days we are uh, looking at uh, Bhaja Govindam. Okay, so who would like to go next? Padmaji? Yes, sir. <clears throat> uh, yeah, so I have uh, two different perspectives on this shloka, sir. <clears throat> okay. one, is, uh, one is I feel that uh, what uh, Shankaracharya here is trying to say is uh, everything in life is always changing. And uh, more than the happiness, it is the moments of all this, uh, you know, sad. Occasions are, we don't want to recollect that. We want to delve only on the uh, unhappy and unpleasant situations and uh, keep focusing on the lack that is arising uh, thereby. So that is one aspect of uh, this shloka. So he is saying that the whole world is like that all over, wherever you see it, something or something, uh, someone is going through uh, any of these conditions, say disease or something negative is happening to them. And uh, that is how the whole world is. And they are constantly engrossed in only that. That is one take. Another thing I feel is uh, the the one that I will prefer to uh, apply is uh, <clears throat> you should be like the lotus uh, leaves. Nothing sticks to it. So even when you are 
facing such situations of disease or some uh, thing is coming into your life, even if it is a happy event, if we can be like the lotus where the nothing sticks to it, I think there is some uh, level of freedom that you get from life itself. Otherwise, you are tied down by all these situations that are coming to you, whether it is positive or negative uh, by your from your perspective. You feel tied down. But if you are able to be like that lotus where nothing sticks to it, there is a certain level of freedom that you uh, get from all this. And you are able to, I think, do what you are supposed to do more uh, with more clarity. Is uh, my thing on this shloka, sir. <laughs> yeah, so <clears throat> the fifth shloka again talks about how the uh, world functions. So yeah, I think it is not only for earning money. Uh, if, if you take the role of a man and a woman in a family, I think just like the <clears throat> money aspect or the financial aspect is coming from the man, I think similarly, uh, a woman is the one who is actually taking all the responsibility at the home, cooking and all this. Either of them, if they are falling sick or you know they are not able to do what they were doing before, I think uh, there is a certain level of like, uh, you are not considered useful anymore. So uh, there is one change in behavior uh, among all the people who are near and dear to you. And I think more than the ones that are exhibiting such behavior, I think the one who is experiencing it fe uh, feels it more. So while you are healthy, uh, you, when people are around you, you have the tendency to think that, oh, I am so important. That is why they love me. Or there might be some uh, perceptions that you have about their love. But when, when you become physically not useful to the same people, when you see the change in behavior, obviously that is very uh, difficult to accept for you or uh, you are not uh, willing to think that, oh, uh, this is why they were loving me and now since I'm not useful anymore, they don't have the same feelings. I think that is difficult for us to accept. So if we are cautious about it from the beginning, then uh, I think it will be easier for you to accept because I think that is very natural to happen. I think all of us, uh, it is not only for someone outside, but I feel even in our own houses, when the same our parents, they when they become old and when they are not uh, used to doing all the things that we, probably they were used to doing 10 years back, 15 years back, I think there is one, um, there is one uh, ignoring aspect that comes within all of us. We may not be uh, mindful of how it is going on, but I think nevertheless it is happening to some extent or uh, even more in some places, I feel. So that is very natural. So if we are able to understand it while we are young, then probably we won't get so much attached in the beginning and uh, uh, <clears throat> we will do what is needed. Yeah, so... <clears throat> I think this is also something similar like when everything is going on well, people inquire about your welfare. But uh, once you once you die, the body doesn't even have a name anymore. People call you the body rather than referring to you by the name or the relationship that you have with others. So, and they are scared obviously of the uh, of the body. Uh, here I, I read somewhere that uh, people thought someone is dead and they were going to burn that person and then suddenly just before burning the person just sat on the, <laughs> sat up and then they all got scared and ran away so the 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 same uh, family you know they are not happy that this person has <laughs> come back alive <laughs> 
they ran away seeing that or thinking that it is something supernatural or something that they don't understand. So, uh, yeah, I uh, if I have to <clears throat> quote a personal experience here, um, uh, not giving names or anything, but uh, <clears throat> we had a situation uh, in in within within our extended family where um, the husband took care of the wife for uh, many, many years and uh, a very uh, strong devotee of, uh, 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 you know, Ayyappa. And then um, he took care of the wife for so long because the wife was not uh, able to do many things physically because of some problems in her leg and things like that. And then towards the end of his life, uh, this person uh, got cancer and then he was really very very uh, sick towards the end however his suffering was not too long but he was very sick and uh, this uh, the so finally when they said that you know they they put him in the palliative care because nothing could be done anymore and he had just had to wait for his end to come and uh, <clears throat> uh the, the the lady in question the wife she went and uh, told him that you know what how long are you going to live like this I cannot do anything now I can't even go out to any shop leaving you like this and all uh, she went and told the person itself so everyone in the family you know there, there, there are two aspects I think to this one was everybody said that oh you know, how well uh, he took care of her and look at her, what she is doing now. And uh, <clears throat> that was one aspect where everyone was judging the lady. And then uh, the other aspect was, I felt was, uh, yeah, everyone ultimately sees only their own sufferings. They are not able to have compassion for the other one so easily. Uh, it is always about, okay, what I am going to do now? Uh, how uh, how my life is going to be now. I think all of us, even though we are living in one family and we have certain responsibilities and duties, to a large extent, I think many of us live like that, where we think what is going to happen to me now? Uh, what What is there in this for me? These kind of questions only drive our actions is what I feel. Uh, not only actions, thoughts and everything. So, uh, to have more, more compassion for others and to be understanding, uh, I think you need to really uh, somewhere along the way embrace all these scriptures. Otherwise, it is very difficult to get out of these things and have a different kind of perspective. <clears throat> like it is, it is, I think it is very common to judge that lady in whatever I had said rather than be understanding towards her. It is, it is very difficult, I feel. Uh, so, yeah, not trying to say what is right or wrong, but I felt that there can be many perspectives to one situation and uh, we should see all of, uh, all of it is what I felt. Very good. Why do you think uh, Shankaracharya is uh, painting all these uh, pictures? I think because I think, sir, there is some ignorance no, in, in how we are living our life itself. Uh, like we are deeply engrossed in the day-to-day -day activities that we do so much that we are not thinking who we really are and uh, what is the purpose of what we are doing all this. We just carry on with everything right from childhood. As soon as you are born, whether it is your parents or teachers or anyone, they only tell you what to do, what to do all the time. It is always about doing some action or the other. Nobody uh, tells you like or even gives you a perspective like why you are doing what you are doing. Okay, it is prescribed. They just say it is this. It is your duty to do this. It is your duty to do that. But are you really, do you really want to do those things or you are just doing it because Someone is telling you to do. That is how I think all the actions, at least in my life, has been from childhood. Only after a certain age that I came to, I really started thinking, why am I doing what am I doing? Uh, even, if, even as a mother or as a wife or as a 
a daughter in law or daughter whatever roles that i am playing why am i doing what am i doing and uh, there are many things that i am i do in a certain way everybody is not doing it in the same way so why is it that i am like this what is what is uh, in me that is making me do it in this way there are certain <clears throat> qualities within us itself which we uh, which we don't consider or which we might be overruling and doing stuff for example it, it is very hard it is still very hard for me to say no to someone even if i am not comfortable i will go uh, beyond that comfort to do what i what i have what i am supposed to do just because i am not able to say no so why you can't say that no if it is so uncomfortable for you why you can't say no something from within is saying you should not be doing this but who is that within who is saying you, you don't have to do this but still i am overriding it and doing it what is the re reason for doing all that i think to connect with your inner self is what uh, shankaracharya is saying all this because that in that whoever is that inner self that you have it has got nothing to do with all this it it doesn't it doesn't change or it doesn't get affected because somebody is not treating you right it doesn't uh, change or it doesn't get affected because you are no, no longer have a family it knows all along that finally this journey is about only yourself you are alone in this it is just that on the way there are some uh, passengers who board that train and then who get down whenever their thing is over or maybe you get down in between when your thing is over i think to get that clarity <clears throat> to not get attached yet be uh, you know be there and do the work i i don't know sir you had shared one uh, quote uh, being being disconnected yet connected with all something on that lines you had shared i think that is exactly how we have to uh, be is what he is guiding towards so that is why i think he is bringing forth all this uh, situations that is normal it is it is normally happening in everyone's life irrespective of who you are where you live your status these are normal things that happens with everyone i feel so uh, to not get into this into all this body and this worldly things and to get connected with yourself to know who you really are i think that is where all this is get taking us towards thank you padma ji thank you sir saranun ji is there something that you would like to share on these three shlokas <clears throat> uh, yeah definitely yeah uh, listening to to this song i just used to enjoy <laughs> looking at the meaning it's like <laughs> it's like uh, just pinching me <laughs> um yeah ah uh, so the way he's saying like o oh, fool right uh, um, reminds me of this uh, I, i see the Uh, people uh, the the workers who sweep the road and keep it there and then uh, i don't know when that that collector vehicle comes after a while i see that all the things are back in the road and, and i used to think that like what foolish act is this uh, like who ever planned this right uh, and the thing that looked so simple and foolish to me and uh, i see that shankaracharya is able to see that in the way people live which is uh, going after all the things outside turning around money and uh, uh, people and family and he can see that is a foolish thing what are you going after and nothing is going to stick to you and uh, it's 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 uh, the way i see is uh, compared to uh, sweeping the road and then like which will again get dirty right so the, the the world outside is constantly changing and uh, and as we have seen that uh, the nature is like deteriorate the nature is deteriorate and how much ever 
uh, uh, take care of self, uh, groom and dress and buy brands, expensive brands, this, that, uh, make those connections, uh, who come and have fun, laugh with me and spend time with me, be friends or colleagues, uh, uh, families, relatives. Seeking that happiness outside is a foolish act. That's what, this is what like uh, it's like very strongly I can I can see and uh, and first thing is like uh, really poke you so that like you wake up and say like what what are you saying then I say like then then like what should I do it's like okay you you see it you agree then like go and figure out who you are. And uh, whatever that you are doing today to seek that happiness from outside, you are not going to get it. And like you are just getting this momentary flashes of that happiness, and you are thinking that like you can extend it. Uh, no, but uh, rather you you got to start going inside, and that that's where you you get that uh, uh, the uh, stable permanent. Uh, real knowledge of who you are and the happiness that you are, you are, you are always with. And uh, and then like, then the question is like, what about all this action going on? And yeah, it's, it's, it's all that uh, drama that's happening. Okay, it's just, just see it. Don't get too involved and like, uh, or like, don't get attached to it. And like, uh, don't have the likes and dislikes of, oh, I like this song or this this part of life. I don't want this part of life. You have like no control over what you like or what you dislike. It is, it is just, it is what it is. And uh, like, you don't have to worry because you are not that, know that. And like, go figure out who you are truly. Like, I think it's, yeah. It's a painting that sad picture to basically poke you and say like, no, okay, wake up, right? You, you, to to get someone out of the comfort zone, you really have to push, right? And and these these are like really pushing. <laughs> if you put it lighter, they are not going to react. I would I wouldn't have reacted, and like um, yeah, it it just. Um, yeah, really pushed. <laughs> pushed me. <laughs> <laughs> Very nice. That's right. Yeah. Like Prabhuji always says, you know, when someone is too comfortable, there is no reason why they would want to evolve. I really didn't know that. Uh, when uh, I think when we listen to that uh, Emma Subhalakshmi's uh, way of singing, and it's like okay, you put and like enjoy, but then, like, look at the meaning. You you wouldn't sit there in that mode. If if someone doesn't cry, looking at these verses, I I like, like they they are not there. I used I used to think it is just a, a devotional song to Balaji. That's what I used to think, Saranadi. When I when I because it was a ritual in my house, you know, <laughs> like uh, every day morning, the the Suprabhatam will play play first, then Bhaja Govindam, and then Vishnu Sahasranama. This was the pattern. So I used to think, okay, all this is about Tirupati Balaji praising him and <laughs> you know shlokas for him. That's how I used to think. <laughs> yeah. Wonderful. Is there anything more, uh, Sarvanji, you would like to say? Mm, uh, no, it is. Already I'm at the edge of my chair. So. <laughs> <laughs> Satyaji, would you like to say anything? Uh, yeah, Vajayaji. Am I audible? Yes, you are very much audible. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, as um, Padmaji rightly said and Sharonanji also said, 
um, when when we are listening to this, um, it it is a more in depth uh, meaning that uh, Shankaracharya is actually trying to tell us. So whatever is uh, given here is a fact. The only thing we uh, ever realized, uh, we never thought that. there is something hidden in what we um, i mean are we are accustomed to do things in a different way so in fact nothing sticks that is what um, i exactly see when i am looking at a lotus uh, like this on the screen uh, nothing sticks but we uh, but are we behaving like that are we looking at everything in that way um we always feel that this is my son my daughter my husband my family my house and and you are uh, deprived of everything the moment uh, there is uh, no life in the body so nothing even life in the body doesn't stick so what all we are running for uh, hither and thither uh, all day long all life long uh nothing actually sticks if if we are looking at it uh, if we are more involved into anything we uh, rarely see the reality a distance makes us see things better so it is like the birds eye view when you are on top of the hill you can see the whole uh, place better you get a better view and when you are inside uh, the place or when you are involved in the place you obviously we are not able to see things clearly so that distance is detachment so that distance when we create that distance with everything in fact with material things with the people uh, with every relation uh, if we are and with ourselves even with ourselves we need to create that distance when we are looking at us as some other entity then you are able to see yourself the real self also so if the same distance is applied to everyone uh you see everyone as a different entity and uh, that gives you more clarity and uh, that clarity is nothing but being detached nothing sticks you are the self excellent so uh, is that what you want to cover for all the three shlokas or is there something more you would like to add on to anything else yeah as long as um as long as we look i mean um uh, it is not impractical to be detached in fact that is the only uh, practical thing uh, what we are actually doing is something which we are used to suppose someone you know uh, between the wife and the husband someone says no 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 i don't uh, care about all this we are just in a journey we will not like to hear it but the, it requires a bit of uh, uh, you know uh, wisdom to understand the reality be, uh, behind it and it is not necessary that uh, detachment means uh, not loving the person in fact that unconditional uh, love which um, uh, in fact what uh, uh, all the upanishads try to tell us is to have that love unconditional love towards everyone when you focus your love only towards your son only towards your husband only towards your daughter that is where the problem arises but the same unconditional love suppose uh, you know for example prabhu ji when when there is something i need to discuss with him or i want to talk to him i feel that unconditional love he has that love but he is not attached to me so that is exactly what creates a lot of peace so uh, a particular any particular relationship it if it has all the love we require but it does not cling as an attachment it does not cling that is uh, exactly the type of uh, uh, you know feeling that we need to have all the time instead uh, what we try to do is we look at the world separately the family separately we look at the family separately we look at ourselves separately so this separation is creating a lot of uh, bondage and in the in the separation in the family also the son is more dear to me the daughter is more dear to me than anyone else again in the daughter and in and the son again there is some uh, some other uh, separation and between the me and them also there is a separation so uh, more and more we create uh, this separation there is more suffering so uh, when when uh, there is unconditional uh, love instead of uh, thinking as my 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 when i look at it at a birds eye view uh, angle 
everything seems to be the same everything is equally distant to me including myself including my own body mind and intellect which are working if i am looking at it at a distance from a distance i think everything looks same uh, to me and there is no necessity no need to cling on to any particular uh, body be it your own body or anyone else's body so nobody excellent very nice haryom rupa ji i see that you have joined late um, is there something that you would also like to share on these three shlokas haryom vijay ji today i want just want to be a listener sure because... no problem all right excellent so i think you know we have covered uh, yeah shubha ji shubha ji already said you know she doesn't want to talk today oh, shubha ji would you like to still at least give some punches <laughs> even cough is a punch yeah lots of people yeah. in maunam today <clears throat> Yeah, yeah, Mauna or Rata today, sir. <laughs> okay. All right. This is like earthquake, Shubhaji. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe I... I talk too much. That's why. <laughs> you talking too much? Where? <laughs> that that's it. That's why for the past fifty. <laughs> that's why for the past 15 days silence in our house silence in our house okay yeah so i th i think uh, shankaracharya ji is just uh, pricking so that you know it is uh, sharp otherwise uh, uh, change won't happen most often you know there is uh, lethargy inertia right uh we we continue to live life until confronted with by sadguru so until until a sharp question until a, a stark reality hits us sometimes uh, it is hit by life you know in the in the form of some uh, great danger or loss of money or loss of dear ones or loss of our own health mm. like that you know sometimes we wake up because there is a jolt from life but here shankaracharya ji is waking us up with a similar jolt so that you know we really wake up and uh, ask the most pertinent questions i think the fundamental uh, fundamental uh, uh, reason why shankaracharya ji is painting all this is is to wake us up to the what is the most important question in life what am i running behind what am i seeking so to evoke that question unless that question comes from deep within and, and unless that question is a very honest question and i really want to introspect and i really want to uh, realize that uh, answer it won't happen because at the end of the day no amount of scripture no amount of teachings by sadguru is ever going to help unless i take that step because i fundamentally it is within me that this realization has to occur so it is not just about repeating uh, that scripture knowledge it is about looking at my life's experience and realizing the truth through the scripture knowledge scriptures knowledge because scripture is not going to give us new experience however to look at the life through the scriptures knowledge i need to first of all be honest i need to like like how sharavan ji felt i need to see these patterns of behavior leave the others leave the others okay how is it with respect to me because fundamentally life is about you and your relationship with other aspect so called other aspects of life so it is 
for my inner evolution that Shankaracharya ji is poking this. And sooner I wake up, which is what he wishes for each one of us, sooner I wake up, then I can open up to the wonderful world that has always been there. By no means Shankaracharya ji is trying to paint a grim picture. He is just asking us to shift our orientation. So the more I'm oriented towards the changing, the more I'm going to suffer. But to shift towards the unchanging, I need to first of all give up my sense of attachment and sense of pleasure that I derive from the changing. So this is uh, in, in, in a way the uh, the teaching method even in uh, Bhagavad Gita it begins by Arjuna's Vishada Arjuna Vishada Yoga it's all about lamenting and the lamenting is because of ignorance and only when I realize that I am ignorant in some areas of life then only I can learn. Because the attention that is needed to learn and the devotion or the bhakti that is needed to learn comes only when I am truly seeking. Otherwise it becomes a mere, I also attended uh, that class, this class, that session, this session, I've read that. You know, it becomes an intellectual conversation not a transformational power. All right. So, is there any other question or any other comment anybody wants to make on these three shlokas? If not, shall we conclude here on these three? Adiós.